Aloha! Welcome to a special edition of the Temple of Surf, the podcast. It is a special moment for surfers from all around the world, the first surf Olympic Games ever. We discuss with some of the athletes going to Tokyo Olympics about this amazing event, surf and much more. Hello, welcome to the Temple of Surf, the podcast, the Olympic Games edition. Today with us, representing Argentina, is Leandro Uzuna. We discuss with him about his amazing journey, surf, and much more. Hi, Leandro, welcome to the show. Where are you today? Today I am in Miami. This is um, kind of crazy because I was going to go back home to Argentina, but Argentina closed. Oh, wow. their, yeah, their, uh, their borders are, they used to let 2,000 people per day come in, and now they're only letting 600 people a day come in. So I'm in Miami. I'm kind of stuck here. The Olympics are in less than a month away. So it's going to be super hard for me to go back home. So I might have to stay here and just go to California, train here, and then go straight from here to the Olympics. Oh, my God. That's, it's crazy. You know, like we still... Uh... COVID is still um, affecting quite a lot, huh? Oh, it's crazy, man. I, I was just, uh, I became a dad five, six months ago, almost for the yeah. first time. I had a little baby boy, Benicio. Benicio, mira, Benicio, Italiano. And I, I, haven't been, I haven't been able to see him for a month, and it might be another month since I don't see him. So I like, I'm freaking out a little bit, but at the same time, I know it's all, it's all a process, you know, and it'll be a nice story to tell him when he's older. Of course, you know, being in a, uh, in the Olympics and, uh, you know, like uh, go to Tokyo, get back to Argentina and enjoy paternity. It's, uh, it's a nice thing. <laughs> yeah, it really is the nicest thing, the most beautiful thing that's ever happened to me. Um, I can't believe like it's a miracle, you know, how they all say it, it is yeah. a miracle and I'm loving it. I love being a dad. It's awesome. It is. It is definitely. So today we're gonna uh, we're not gonna talk about being a dad, <laughs> but we're gonna talk about surf and the Olympics. So the first question that I have for you is: In your opinion, what is the most important thing in surfing? I think it, the most important thing about surfing is to enjoy it. You know, to have fun while you do it, to love it. I think that's the most important thing about surfing is to love what you do. And if you can love a sport that's so healthy and so natural and in such a cool environment, it's even greater for you, you know? You're gonna have a good life. You're gonna have a beautiful life with a lot of passion and a lot of, um, I don't know, just uh, just being surrounded by nature. And I think you're gonna enjoy it. You're gonna keep forever young, you know? <laughs> no matter if you do it uh, professionally or just like Sunday, um, it's... Uh, Having fun is so important. So exactly, exactly. Enjoy what you do. You know, they always say, "Love what you do," and that's what I think surfing does for me. I love to surf. Yeah. Do you remember your first surfboard, and do you still have it? My first custom surfboard, hmm. the one that was made for me, I got it for my tenth tenth birthday in California when we we lived here for ten years in San Diego and California, and I got a first custom surfboard by Bissell. Uh, when I was 10 and I still have it. I still have it in my house. Yes, I do. I actually, I actually sold it to my cousin and my cousin sold it to, I don't know who. And then last year, my dad recovered it. He yeah. went and he got it and he bought it back. And now we have it at our house. Very important, right? For the memories. Very important. I had a couple surfboards before that were my dad's and my friends and they would let me use them. But that was my first, my, my first board. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's uh, very uh, unusual to have your own first surfboard because usually they get like, I don't know, a snap, trash or given to cousin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but good. Oh, I'm yeah. glad your dad was able to recover it. It's like your first girl, no? No, I mean, I mean, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't uh, know if my dad will be able to recover my first girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What was the, the defining moment of your career so far? The most important one? I think uh, winning the first, uh, the first time I, I won the ISA World Games in 2014 in Peru, that was, a pretty, that was a pretty big boom in my career. That's like a pretty good highlight, like uh, winning such a great event for my country. I think also winning it again in 2016 
Because like the first time there, everybody's like, oh, the first time you got lucky, whatever, this and that. And the second time it's like, whoa, this guy's really, you know, he's really onto something. So that was another huge impact in my career. And then, of course, the Pan American Games in 2019, which I got second. And that was actually the result that helped me qualify to Olympics, you know, yeah. maybe not me qualifying in the ISA World Games, but my second place in the Pan American Games was what made me qualify. So. It was, uh, that was probably, I think the Pan American Games was probably one of the most important times in my career because of the um, highlights, you know? Yeah, definitely. Talking about competitive-wise, competitive-wise, surfing-wise, like career surfing, probably going to Hawaii, going to Hawaii and seeing people drop in on those huge waves and pipeline and seeing what a different level and a different kind of craziness there is in the water and in the barrel and in the, in the, surfing, the surfing world, you know, the surfing world. So that was kind of a big, big highlight for me in my career too, is getting to Hawaii and going down to the beach at Pipeline and seeing these guys taking off on huge waves. I was like, whoa, that was huge impact. Definitely. Like something that you cannot forget easily, right? <laughs> never, never. That's a memory forever. Cool. So you said about uh, the Tokyo Olympics. How was the journey so far? Oh, it's been fun, man. It's been crazy, you know, a little anxious because uh, we've just been waiting, like uh, so uncertain on everything, you know, like, Is it going to be in a wave pool? Uh, is it going to be men to men? Is it going to be how many minutes of heat? Uh, is it going to happen, you know? Because we've been doing this whole coronavirus pandemic. Is it going to happen? Like, how's the qualification? So it's been a lot of, like, ups and downs and, like, journey and just a little bit dizzy. Like, where's it going? But uh, it's definitely been a fun one, man. It's definitely been really fun. Like, uh, you know, I've, I've, I'm an athlete. I've always loved sports. It's tennis, soccer, football, all of the sports. And since I was young, I always looked at the Olympics, you know, I've always looked at the Olympics, but I never really dreamed about being in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. I've always dreamed about being a good athlete, like doing whatever you want, you know, and I, I started surfing when I was super young. So it's always been like the WSL, you know, the CT, yeah. the World Surf League. So that's been my dream since I was young is getting into those top 33 in the world, being in the championship tour. And in 2016, right after I won the, the world games, the second world games, Fernando Aguirre comes out, who's the guy that put surfing in the Olympics, comes out to me. He's like, oh, Lele, you're the first world champ in the era that surfing is Olympic. I was like, whoa, whoa, that's cool, man. Nice. Another, you know, like another little title on my, on this. And then from that day on, I kind of like, well, there's a chance for us to go to the Olympics. That's crazy. And that's when my, like, my adventure started, like my training, my focus on that. You know, my, me putting it down on a paper, like qualifying to the Olympics and getting in that mindset where you want to achieve, you know, you want to achieve that goal and you already vision it and you dream it and you pursue it. And that's how things happen. I think, you know, that's how you get your objects closer to you. So I started in 2016, my whole, and it's been a fun, I mean, it's been like, I told you, anxious, uncertain, worried, happiness, like all the above, but it's been fun, man. It's been really fun. And definitely being one of the of the few surfers that will uh, will surf uh, the first Olympic Games for surf is gonna be is gonna stay in history. And so oh yeah, I mean I was I was telling my friends like we're gonna remember this so much when we're older and we look back at this picture. We're like when we're 16, we look back at this picture when we all qualified because I think it's awesome that I qualified, but it's so cool that we I qualified with my friends. That's like the funnest thing, you know. Like I have these friends that I traveled so many years with. And the same day we all qualified that same oh. exact day we all qualified. So it was crazy. I mean, and like you said, history, not only being in the Olympics, if not the first time and the only one from your country, that's like another boom, boom. That's another two pluses. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so um, what is your expectations from, from these games? Obviously it's the first time for surf for surfers. So you go in there, what do you expect? I mean, I'm going for the medals, man. Like, <laughs> you know, you, you got to dream big. You got to, you got to dream big. I mean, I, I, I started vision the Olympics in 2016 and I'm here now I got to dream the medals and maybe you never know. You never know. Yeah. If I dream, if I dream just to participate, I've already accomplished that. You know, I got to dream bigger than that. So it's, um, I try, I'm trying to go for the medals. I'm trying I'm going to, Give it all my best, you know? Definitely. Is that something that you're going to bring with you uh, in Tokyo? Something that uh, 
you cannot think about going there without it. I mean, I, I'm a little, I'm a little, you know, like I, I do a little, like I get into my routines and stuff, you know, and I try to get into a comfort zone when I step on the same rock or I drink the same water, or I listen to the same music. I don't really carry like an object where I need to take it everywhere. You know, I, of course, have the Argentinian flag. I have it with me. And of course, I have a bunch of messages from my my family, you know, my friends. And maybe I'll listen to it before I compete. But um, I don't really carry something everywhere I go. You know, I always feel like it's 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 got to go with the moment. Whatever's happening in that moment. OK, step on that same rock. It's going well. Step on it. <laughs> Okay, okay, understood. But of course, the flag is something that. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I mean, I need my flag and I need my surfboards. That's for sure. Okay, so except the Olympics, what are your future projects? Actually, in Argentina, I have a surf school where I live in my in my local home break, and then I'm also trying to get surfing into the schools, like the public and private schools in my city. I'm trying to get surfing into like an educational program. Uh, curricular. I want it to be like so where they get so it's in part of um educación física, which is PE. You know, they can choose like oh, you can choose su- soccer, you can choose swimming, you can choose tennis, you can choose surfing. And I'm trying to educate through surfing. So I'm trying to give back to the sport so much it's given me. Not only by having my surf school and teaching the public and doing social classes and you know just helping people get in the water. But if not trying to get it into the city as a program, like as a law, like you can choose surfing and you can learn so much from it. And it's such a cool lifestyle and it can change your life. And I mean, I've been educated so much through surfing, you know, through being patient, to respecting people, to watching over ourselves, to cleaning in our, our environment, you know, in, in medio ambiente. So that's what I'm trying to do. Those are my projects. And of course, getting into the... The, what is it? The Association of Argentina the Surfing Association, and I think in the future I'll I'll be I'll probably be one of the coaches or assistant coach or some somewhere where I can help out the future generations of our sport. Wow, that's a, that's a great plan. Uh, I really like it. What what do you think your qualification to the Olympic means for the surfers in Argentina? I think it kind of like it, it makes it not impossible, you know, they kind of see like, oh, my friend Leandro Lele did it. I can do it. You know, I see him surfing every day, man. He's he's blood and bones, you know, like he's I mean, if he can do it, I can do it. I've been him in contests, you know, so it's like I think it kind of opens up a path. It makes it it makes it more closer, you know, like more imaginable, like more possible when you see one of your friends do it. That's what I think it is. That's what I think it does to the generations like. I mean, look at Brazil, you know, you know, look at Brazil. I mean, how many good Brazilians is there, you know, and they all feed on each other. And that's what it is. It's a competition. It's a it's a competition. It's a competition between friends. That's what makes you, you know, and I think that's what's going to help out. It's going to be like, oh, let it do it. I can do it, man. We, we're neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> so there will be uh, in the future more and more uh, uh, champions uh, from uh, from Argentina. And um, and that's important, you know. That's important, as you said, to visualize a person and to try to emulate and uh, to improve yourself. Yeah, I, th- I think the most important thing is for more people to get into sports, you know, and to love sports and do what they love and enjoy it, you know. And then all the competitive, like if he can do it, I can do it, and then go for the, that the main, the biggest. I don't know the biggest uh, scale you can go to, and just dream dream as big as you can, but. The first thing I always try to explain to my all my athletes and and all the people I teach, you know, my students is just enjoy it, you know, because if you don't enjoy it, you're not I don't I don't think life's going to give things back to you. You're going to be there. You're going to be sad. You're going to be pissed off. You're going to hit the board. You're going to, you know, so you got to understand to enjoy it before you understand to accept it, you know, and accept the consequences and all the things that can happen. And life puts things in order. So the sooner you start enjoying it, the sooner life's going to start giving you good things. Like, boom, boom. And we go back to the first question, you know, having fun. So Having fun. Having fun is everything, man. Yeah, important. Uh, we're going to finish our interview with a short Q&A session. So please answer the first thing that comes up to your mind. Okay. One, what, one word? No. The first thing okay. that comes up to your mind. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. The best surfboard that you ever ridden? 
DHD, Darren Hanley Design from Australia. What's the best shaper in your opinion or your favorite one? I mean, I got a couple, but Darren Hanley, DHT is definitely one of the best. And then you got um, All Merrick is, of course, one of the best. Uh, Mayhem, Mabiolos, Marcio from Sharp Eye. There's a lot nowadays, but I've always, I've written a lot of DHTs and I really like the Darren Hanley designs. Fantastic. Personal question, your favorite song? Wow. Hey. I mean, I like a lot. I like a lot of music. I don't think I have a favorite one, but I like Led Zeppelin, Over the Hills and Far Away. I really like that song. Okay. Cool. I like that. Uh, your favorite surf spot? I would have to say I got I got two, you know. I, I mean, I got a bunch, but where I feel like where I feel really like connected and, um, you know, I like the environment and the, the people is definitely Mar del Plata, Argentina, El Yot, which is where I live and where I have my surf school and where the waves where I surf most of the time. And definitely also winning sea in La Jolla, California, in San Diego, where I also lived for 10 years and I feel like, a, like I'm, I'm from there and I, I feel like I charge my batteries there and, and I know all the people and I just love being in that com comfort zone. Yeah. Looking forward to the 2028 uh, Los Angeles Olympics. That will be fun. 2028? I don't know, man. That's a long ways to go. <laughs> 2024, 2024 Tahiti, right? And then 20... Yeah, yeah. I like, I like, I like 2024. 2028 is kind of a while <laughs> away, man. I got to... My kid's going to be like 10 right there. I don't know. I'm going to have to be coaching him. But uh, wow. I mean, of course, always looking forward to it. I don't know about competing in it, but of course, always looking forward to it. Maybe being as a coach or something. But I'm definitely going to I'm definitely going to try for the 2024. That's for sure. Yeah. 2028. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> okay. We'll see. Um, your favorite surfer of all time? I'd have to say Mick Fanning. Definitely. I really, yes, I really like, I really like Mick Fanning, and I mean, I can name a couple, of course, but Mick Fanning and John John Florence are really standouts for me. And the last question is a little bit unusual. We ask everybody on this show it has nothing to well, do with surf. Okay, uh, but since you are a father, you know, I'm sure that you know the answer. The best relationship advice, except who the other person is. Love them with all your heart and learn from each other. Yeah, I agree with you completely. It allows patience. Patience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling everybody, I'm telling everybody in the world right now, I got, I got patience for two people. Oh, really? My girl <laughs> and my baby boy. Right now. No one else. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I really like that. Thank you <laughs> so much for being on the show with me today. And I look forward to talk to you very soon. Hey, thank you, my friend, dude. All the best. And sorry it took for so long, huh? Pero no muchas problem. gracias. Thank Prego. you. Ciao. Hi, it's me again. I hope you enjoyed our today's episode. If you want to know more about us, please follow www.thetempleofsurf.com and all our social media. Mahalo!